This is Richie Ray, vocalist from the Stars Revolt, and you are listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Your source for all hard rock, heavy metal, new metal, alternative, punk, horror punk, hardcore, rock, and all local bands with your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bodfather. Hey everybody, welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. I'm your host, John DeBod, a.k.a. The Bod Father. And as always, I bring you guys awesome interviews. And today it is an honor and privilege to have Mr. Richie Ray. He's the lead vocalist of the Stars Revolt. They hail from Louisville, Kentucky, my home state, folks. They have a debut EP, which is a self-titled uh, debut EP called The Stars Revolt, of course. And that's out on May 18th. And get out, check it out, check out this band. So, Richie, how's it going? Uh, it's going pretty well, man. How about you? Doing awesome. Glad to talk to another Kentuckian in the music scene, I guess, you know? Yeah, I know. There's not there's not a ton of us out there, but there's a few. You just got to find them. That's for sure. That is very, very sure. And, and rock and, and metal is few far in between here as well, too. So Very true. The lead single, Be Careful What You Wish For, uh, and I quote, with loss, it touches on understanding and coming to terms with things out of your control and the uncertainty of what will and what could be, how the little choices you make today could have huge everlasting effects. That's very true. What you want oh. might not be what you get, but so so be careful what you wish for. Let's talk about this a little bit. You know, did this let you guys get everything out about this lead single and, and song possibly? Yeah, it's um, yeah. The, the song is a little bit strange, mostly just because of I do this. I write songs very strangely, but this one in particular, the verses are opposite points of view of the same of the same situation. So, uh, without going into like crazy detail, I had a friend that was going through a divorce, and they were telling me about all the stuff that was going on, and basically they they had this house and. The husband, who was at fault for everything that went on, he didn't want to he didn't want to get rid of it because he felt that was the last thing that was holding their marriage together. And when we were coming up with the song, I was just kind of thinking about that. And then um, that was the basis of obviously the chorus of the song, if, if anyone's heard it. And then the the verses are uh, opposite perspectives. So from the the woman's perspective and then from the from the man's perspective as well. What's impressed you the most about making this debut self-titled EP? What's caught your eye about it, if anything, possibly, Richie? Well, we actually, um, I, I, I produce records, and um, this record, the record that we're getting ready to put out, um, I actually would produce the entire thing. So I think the main thing for me was that we spent about five months putting this thing together, which is an incredibly long time for I guess for most bands, because usually the process doesn't take that long, but we went into the studio and we actually recorded around nine songs. And then uh, we kind of cut it back to what we thought, what thought were the five that best fit with, with the sound and the, the direction that we're trying to go. So I think the thing to me that's, that, uh, that you asked was probably just the amount of, the amount of time that we spent working on this thing. Cause it was, it was a, it was a, a long, long process. Okay. So you guys are, Writing on a full album, full length right now, or is that right? Is that what you just said? No, no, no. Right now, the the songs that we ended up not putting on the record, I don't, I don't know if we'll ever release them. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So basically, we wrote, we wrote, we had originally planned on doing a full length originally, and then as we finished the songs, there were some of them that we. It's not that they were bad songs, or we we didn't think that they were bad songs, so they might be. Hell, I don't know, <laughs> but um, the, but we just didn't feel that they fit with the five that we chose. So then we just decided that we'd rather put out five songs that we thought were our strongest as opposed to like five songs that we thought were really solid and a couple filler songs just to, you know, because once you get to a point, you you've listened to albums where there's like four or five good songs and the rest of them are just okay. Mm -hmm. Sure. And we did, we didn't want to do that. So we just picked our five, the five that we thought were the strongest. And then we just, we just went with those. Now you said you produced the EP. Do you like that side mm -hmm. of the music uh, world being the producer and being in control of your own albums? I absolutely love that. 
Now, we, we didn't um, – there's a guy that, that uh, I work with in my studio a lot that mixes a lot of the stuff for me. So as far as like the mixing and the mastering, we let him handle that because I didn't, I didn't want to do anything that had to do anything with like the, like the leveling or anything like that because I wanted an outside ear on that. But as far as like the production and the, and the writing and everything, yeah, that, that, I love doing that. I do that for a lot of different artists, but it was – it was more fun doing it on my own project because I haven't done, this is my first project that I have been a part of in about eight and a half years. I was in a band before called Shindig and we had some pretty decent success. And then, uh, ever since, uh, we split up, which is, this is around 2009. I haven't done anything musically. So I just kind of jumped in with both feet to produce this record and, and write it with the guys. And, uh, we're, we're pretty proud of how it turned out. <laughs> And plus, hopefully, hopefully people like it. I guess we'll find out there in a week or so. And plus, you know, that if you're being the producer, that gives you time to just recharge your batteries and then go at it again. You're, you're not on a, you know, a time frame to get it done. Right. And that was, that was the best part. We had an unlimited time frame of, of what we wanted to do. So a lot of times when bands go into studio, you know, they, it's either like a, it's usually either like a time restraint or like a money restraint, but you know, I was doing it, we're doing it in my studio, so we didn't have to pay for that. So pretty much we just had unlimited time to do whatever, whatever we wanted to make sure we were perfectly happy with how everything came out in the end. Any songs which off was the, a, a huge relief. Any songs off the EP for you, Richie, that stand out more than any on as of right now possible? I mean, I know it's like picking your favorite collectible or child, but Darlene, that stand out for you? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I would say probably, I think that my two, there's two songs that I, my, my two favorite songs on the record, I think is the, the be careful what you wish for, which is the one that we put out as a single with the video. Uh, and then the second one is, uh, a song called pretend, which is the opening track of the EP. And those two songs were written actually after we had already done the record and we had already recorded songs they were done and then we ended up writing two more and we recorded those to put those on and those ended up being my two favorite from the album how much growth musically have you seen yourself in this band go through up to the release of this ep oh oh tremendous amounts i mean when we when we first got together just to mess around just um we had me and Skyler, the guitarist and brett uh we had gotten together because we had known each other for a while i had produced some of their old projects and then when their bands broke up they wanted to kind of get together with me to mess around and see what we could come up with and uh, we got together and actually we had we were going to learn a cover of uh waking up in vegas by katie perry because we thought that'd be fun to do a rock cover of uh -huh. and let me tell you man it was terrible it <laughs> sucked so bad and uh we uh and then, geez, it was it was awful. And then we got together again, and we tried it again, and it sucked just as bad the, the <laughs> second time as it did the first time. And so, um, and then after that, I think maybe like the third or fourth practice, we decided maybe we'll try to write something because my God, it's bound to be better than this terrible cover that we're doing. So uh, we ended up writing a song called "Good Night, Good Night," which is on the EP. And um, so I think from like from when we started to where we are now, I mean it's. It, it's completely different. We've taken a lot of cool things in that we like about other bands and kind of combine them together. And we do a bunch of weird stuff. that doesn't sound weird. Like here, I'll give you an example. Skylar and I both play guitar. He plays lead. I just kind of play, play, uh, you know, like generic rhythms, but they work for what we do. But uh, on the entire album, out of all five songs, there's one chorus in one song that we play the same thing. And everything else is two different guitar parts constantly throughout the record <laughs> so it's like it's, it's it's weird little things like that but and it's and it's probably not anything that anybody would ever notice if they listen to the record but right. you know it's it's one of those things as far as growth and what what kind of music we used to play which we were all in pop punk bands and we've kind of matured as people and writing and musicians and now we're more of this like weird emo rockish thing i guess you'll just kind of have to tell whenever that whenever you hear the record but That'll make, that'll make more sense later. Do you do anything differently during the writing and recording process to maybe help keep your mind fresh and open to to not let the music get stale, to, to not repeat stuff? Do you do anything differently, maybe? You know what? A little bit. Mostly what we try to do is we try to be mindful of what we do in other songs because 
which is exactly what you said. We don't want to repeat things and have everything sound the same. On this particular album, there's a lot of things that have throwbacks to different songs. You know, like uh, like there's like a, a couple lyrics here and there that will tie the songs together because they kind of tell a story. But you know, we we make sure that like we don't want to like we don't want to be like a cookie cutter where everything is you know everything everything is the same. Right. So yeah, we're we're pretty mindful of that, but mostly we just really pay attention to what we've done before and uh, make sure that we try really hard not to repeat that. And if we're going to do something that's similar, we try to at least change it up so it comes across in a different way. What can fans expect at a show from the Stars Revolt who have not got to see you guys live yet? Well, hopefully, hopefully a good time. But, you know, we get up there, we play, uh, we play hard. We go, we usually play, we play fairly short steps, but we go up and we play hard the whole time. We try to get the crowd involved. We, you know, we have a lot of fun. We play a, we play a ridiculous cover song sometimes at the end of the set. It's not Katy Perry, so I don't want to ruin it for anybody who's going to come to a show. But it's uh, it's one of my favorite pop songs of all time. But uh, which we'll be playing that was we're, we're doing our uh, CD release show at Diamonds in Louisville, Kentucky, on May 18th, and we're playing with a band called New Year's Day. I'm not sure if you've heard of them. Oh yeah, yeah. they're they're really really good. But uh, we'll probably be playing our super secret cover song there, and uh, you know it's 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 just, it's just a good time. We get up there, we have fun, we try to interact, we try not to suck. That's our main thing that we do, is we try super hard not to be awful. <laughs> and we've, we've, we've pulled that off decently so far. But yeah, you know, it's just, it's just a fun time. It's like, a, it's like a fun rock show where everybody can just get into it, sing along, clap along, have a good time, and go home happy. Oh, sure. Yeah, get away for a couple hours. Absolutely. Do you like the digital era of recording albums and plus social media to get stuff out there quicker that we're in right now? Do you like this or no? Oh, yeah, I, I really like it. You know, I'm, I'm from the age where we used to do, we started off with like the analog recordings where we had the reel-to-reel, and you know, I mean, everything was everything was good, and it sounded it sounded a little bit different. But now it's just everything's just so much easier to sound good, and it. I feel like the, this era, this era of recording, has really helped smaller bands, like like more local bands, because sure. now you can get like a really good quality recording without spending like five, six thousand dollars in the studio. Very true. And I think that's overall that's really good for the music scene in general because I know you do you interview bands all the time and you listen to a lot of music mm-hmm. and you could have the best band in the world, but if their recordings suck, then a lot of times you never get that second chance. Try it. So yeah. now, you know, now it gives a lot a lot of bands more opportunity to do more things. So I, I think I think that's pretty good. Social media on the other hand is good in some instances, but you know, it doesn't really, it doesn't replace like the personal interaction that you need. So a lot of, a lot of bands are dependent on social media to go out and promote their events. And you know, it, it doesn't really work like that anymore because everybody's just drowned in, you know, event invites and things like that. So, I mean, you still got to go out, you got to talk to people, you got to fly. Matter of fact, because we're playing uh, Diamonds, we went up last night. We're we're still in town, so because we're not doing anything until the release show, so we actually went up to uh, we went out to the Andrew WK show last night over here in Louisville and hung out, and uh, you know we talked to a bunch of people, we passed out some flyers, me and Will the bassist, you know we did that because you got to go out and you got to have personal interaction with people, and you know that's just yeah. that's just how you have to do it. Yeah, and going back to the the digital recording factor of albums, it's so cool, I think, personally, because like you said, it does help out these local bands. I know several local bands in different states, man, that are are pumping out records, and I do mean records, in like four or five months apart. Right. So it's pretty damn cool if you ask me. (laughs) Oh, yeah, yeah, man. I, I, I love it. Like, I can see both sides of the argument. So like some people like it, some people don't, but on a smaller scale, it like it, it's helped, it's helped so, so many more people. And some people are going to complain, like you've got like pop singers and all their stuff is auto-tuned and the backing vocals are built in melodyne and they're not real. But you know, I mean, like that's just, it's just part of what you get. It's like, you know, anybody that complains is just like the old people that complained about like, you know, like TVs getting, you know, better and stuff like that. You know, it's just, everything's going to change as far as technology goes and it, it's generally always going to improve. So, I mean, you know, you just got to kind of embrace what's happening because it's, it's not going away. What does the stars revolt bring to the table for music? That's not out there as of right now. Oh man. Well, oh, that's a good question. We uh, are, 
I don't know. I don't really know other than we are like a strange hybrid of like modern rock radio and like 2000s emo. So like My Chemical Romance and like the Juliana Theory and stuff like that. So we have like this weird, like fun, eerie retro vibe at the same time as like we're doing like just straight up like fun rock songs, if that makes if that makes any sense. So I think we're kind of doing something a little bit different than what a lot of bands are doing now. So I think that's that's probably the thing that we're bringing is we're just man, I don't even know how to answer that question. But that's that's probably about the best answer that I've got. What made you want to become a musician? What was that spark for you, Richie, that said, yeah, that's what I want to do right there? <laughs> oh, man. All right. So this is super lame, but it's the truth. Um, <laughs> I was probably 14 years old, and uh, my dad and I were on the couch, and he put on the – it was an NBC special. It was called This Is Garth Brooks, and it was like his very first TV special. I don't know if you ever saw it, but he played this giant arena – and uh, he had like this stage that went, it was like a 360 stage so he could go to any side of the stage and interact with everybody. And man, I tell you what, I watched that dude perform on TV. And from that moment on, I said, that is what I want to do with my life. And I went the very next day and I bought a guitar and I taught myself how to play. That's awesome. <laughs> so that was, that was the defining moment for me to want to play. And then I'll tell you another funny story is some friends of mine we were watching, okay, so years ago, I had the Kerplunk album by Green Day. Oh, yeah, Green Day. And, uh, yeah, I mean, and I, I loved Kerplunk. I thought it was awesome. And then whenever they got signed to uh, to a major, they put out Dookie, and the first single was uh, Longview. And I, I hated that song. I thought it was thought it was terrible. So some buddies of mine, we, all, we were spending the night at my friend's house, and uh, we were going to watch them because they were going to be on Letterman. So we were going to make fun of them because Longview was terrible. And then they came out and they played basket case. Oh God. Yeah. And I was like, Holy crap. I was like, this is it. So, and then from that point on, like I was like super into pop punk and that's what took my life down that path. So it's, it's weird how like, how like these little tiny things that seem like they don't mean anything, like just change it all. Basket case is, I think it's an iconic song. If you ask me, oh, yeah, that oh, song, yeah. when it starts out with the guitar, I mean, do you have the time? Oh God, it's 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 <laughs> phenomenal, as as I gotta say. Right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I was like, I was young, I was impressionable, I was watching the TV, and they like they came on the Do you have the time to listen to me? Why? And I was like, What is this? Yeah, like, this is awesome. And then to back that up, you had Basket Case, and then there's She that's on there. That's a badass song. Oh man, yeah, dude, that whole album. I think I went the next day and I went and bought that album yeah. and I listened to that for ages. And then really, and I even went and skipped school, like when Insomniac came out, like the next record. And also I think when Nimrod came out, I skipped school both days that those records came out. So I could go get them because this was before like Walmart was 24 hours. So I couldn't go at midnight, but like I would skip school and go to like the record store. Of course I was in West Virginia. So there's not a whole lot there anyway, like in Charleston, but you know, I mean like, it, it, it's funny how like those little things just change your whole life. And without like these, without those two moments, like I have no idea what I'd be doing. Folks, the stars revolt self title EP comes out May 18th. You want to get out and check this band out. Richie, how can folks stay in touch with you guys Buy the CP, some merchandise toward H tickets. How can they do that? My friend. All right. Well, right now the uh, album is available for pre-order on iTunes and Amazon.com. May 18th, it's everywhere. We can get, we have T-shirts, uh, buttons, posters, uh, CD stickers at thestarsrevolt.com. We have all kinds of fancy stuff there, as well as a link to our video for "Be Careful What You Wish For" and uh, all of our upcoming tour dates. All right. Before I let you go, good sir, would you care to do a promo for the show? Oh, absolutely, man, for sure. This is Richie Ray, vocalist from the Stars Revolt, and you are listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Everybody stick around. we got some great, great music coming up, and you only hear these interviews right here on Bod's Mayhem Hour and Bod's Mayhem Radio Network. Thank you so much, Richie. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me on. I, I hear them calling. 